Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons or advancements. More like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'd like to apologise for the delayed start of tonight's show. We were having some serious issues with what I am assuming is my laptop, because it hates reality. Anyway, joining me tonight we have Scarecrow and Stuart. Like always, we've got... Uh, yep, it's already happened. My brain just died. <laughs> wow. Again, we... Right into it. Yeah, it, it, we, we lasted a full minute. Um, anyway, we got Metal Rift. Better. We got Metal Rift joining us again, um, and we have writer and director of Stargate Universe: Distant Hope, Star Trek: Temporal Anomaly, which is coming out this year. Stargate Universe: Lost World, which may or may not have its title changed later, and uh, co-host of the Star Trek web series Trek Yards, Samuel Cockings. Hello, everyone. So he's joining us all the way from the UK. So while we're going to bed, he's waking up, and so he's actually what? How many hours behind us are you? It's it's almost like ten. We're plus right ten. So. Yeah. 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 So past eleven on my end. Yeah. So yeah. Haha. Uh-huh. It's your fault for living down south. We win. Shut up, Queenslander. <laughs> <Thanks, guys. laughs> yeah, so. I feel like having a cup of tea. Too late for that. No, no, <laughs> we no, had no, twenty no. minutes. No. I'm happy with the cold weather and grey and clouds. It's fine. I've had my bit. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, we'll trade you forty degree heat and random storms, which may or may not knock out our internet. <laughs> oh, no, I like internet. That's cool. I'll stick yeah. through. Stick through. <laughs> so, anyway, Stargate Universe: of Distant Hope. You made that a couple of years ago now. Well, actually, it's a 2012. 2012. Yeah. yeah, it's ages ago. Tell us about Feels sort of. Too long. Yeah. <laughs> So tell us about the process involved in sort of when you were making it and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Backstory, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm like the worst host ever. I probably should have warned you about that before we started. <laughs> Mr. Guest, do everything for me, thank you. No, um, <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, no. uh, yeah it's a Stargate fan film. Uh, it's pretty much the only big Stargate fan film. Uh, it's about 23 minutes, and it's... It was sort of just after Universe finished, um, and I had the idea for a story, and I went ahead and made it. Basically, that's sort of the summary. Uh, I'm a filmmaker by trade, I professionally do videography, um, and I wanted to make a film in the Universe, and because I'm quite a you know, uh, hardened cosplayer, um, and my parents have, well, my family has quite a large collection of Stargate props and costumes, one of the biggest in the UK, we thought, we've got the props, I've got the technical knowledge, I've got the equipment, well, yeah, I'll make a film, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Something you've I can do. got the environment for it. Yeah. You, well, just, we haven't got Canada, we've got close enough. That that description of your life makes me super jealous. And considering <laughs> my life makes everybody else on this podcast super jealous, that should really sort of tell you something. I don't know you about used your to life, it, though. that's the problem. <laughs> uh, well, I look around my room and I've got, what, seven TARDISes that I can see? <laughs> that I can see. There's probably more on higher shelves that I can't see. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a shelf. I've got a cupboard designated to Star Trek ships, a cupboard designated to Star Wars ships, a cupboard designated to all sorts of other assorted God knows what. I've got a cupboard designated for science fiction weaponry. I've got a shelf. I've them. got a whole. I got a shelf for that. I've got a whole got shelf a... designated to vinyl. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anyway, <laughs> a, a, a measuring contests aside. Uh, <laughs> 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 and I should have uh, said something there because really all I've got is a metric ton of Gundam model kits and my military <laughs> costume. <laughs> Alright, are we, are we doing this now? Yeah, no, 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 moving on, moving on. Moving on. Already 20 minutes behind. <laughs> yeah, moving along. So, um, how hard was it to do, sort of, match the visual effects and the visual feel of the show for the shots where you added in um, major <laughs> person who's Liam name? Hunt. Yes, Basically. that's the one. Sorry, well, I, I should warn you, tough. I've been awake for like ages my brain just stops <laughs> Stop. well what, what, what's 
funny about Stargate Universe, and I think one of the big reasons people didn't connect to it is, is the amount of you know steady cam, how how movement it feels, um, and to replicate that was less difficult than you think. You just move the camera a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for those shots in particular, I mean, that was some of the start of my visual effects days. So obviously I could do it better now, but uh, in those days it was, you know, um, yeah, it was all right. I just had to match up with the footage in terms of movement. That was a keyframe issue. And then color match a bit and then edit around the guy's face until he could be in front of our actor and then put it in. I mean, the whole point about Distant Hope is that it was trying to be an amalgamation of green screen, live action, um, and show footage and give you a story that because at the time, um, there was no Kickstarter, there was no Stargate fan film push in the same way. There was obviously Star Trek Phase 2 and, and those guys, but they were on a, as long as you don't make money, you're fine. Um, but for us, for Stargate fan filmmakers, we had never had a proper one come out, so we didn't know how MGM would react. Yeah. Um, there was a Stargate uh, Universe fan season 3 animated show, which was in pre-production, and I got a season to Sicily because they tried to continue the franchise and at the time Stargate was a franchise that if you tried to make if you tried to finish the story they would shut you off before you could do anything yeah. so I tried to work out a story that would take place during series one of SG of you and thereby was able to incorporate clips from the show and put my actor in and make it a more of a oh that's cool rather than a well why is he in a room the whole time because obviously no budget leaves you less but having to yeah. Kind of incorporate it into something and make it feel more real. It gives you a better story, I think, and it's it's a more interesting narrative than just A to B. It's A to B to C to A to yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, SGU was a scrambling of sort of placings in time. I yeah. The the main reason I actually joined Save Sci Fi and very few people actually know this was at one point I was working on a Terra Nova short film because oh, that was it was filmed just down the road from where I live. Oh, um, nice. I actually had access to the locations that they filmed that. I've got access to all that, had access to all that sort of stuff. And I thought, this would be brilliant because most of it was filmed on Crown Land. I can actually go there myself. I've got five full sets of Terra Nova armor sitting underneath my bed. And the problem was, I just, no money and the project just sort of fell through. And I'm so glad that didn't happen to you because your pro for Distant Hope has done so well considering the budget, oh, and considering all well, the restraints. Budget- Budget so, was zero, so because it yeah. <laughs> Well, that, it, it's actually funny. I went over to the UK in 2012, and um, when yeah. I was over there, I, when I picked up about a third of my kit that I used for my Terranova guys, because most of the stuff they got, they ordered from the UK and shipped it to Australia. So Nerf guns and whatnot. Yeah, Nerf guns is pretty funny. That was that was actually the easy <laughs> part. I found them on um, Gumtree. I love Gumtree. Mm. You never know what you're going to find on Gumtree. <laughs> You can find some really interesting stuff on Gumtree without even knowing about it. Exactly. So, oh, I just noticed Metal Rift is gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I'm guessing he was the f- reason for all the technical difficulties we've had so far. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. Yep, that works. Yeah, anyway, um, so you've now that you've had Distant Hope out for a while and you're starting work on your next Stargate Universe story. What mm. sort of direction are you going to be taking that without sort of giving away too much? Because I know you're sort of looking at continuing it down a very different sort of direction, sort of. Well, have have you all seen Distant Hope? Yeah, um, yeah I, wa- I watched so, it just before. So yeah, I, I linked it to them and said, "Watch this before the podcast, or I'll kick <laughs> your ass." We've got we've so, gone to the effort of getting the guy on. You need to watch it so you know what we're talking about. <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Always a nice thing. So, did you all watch until the end of the credits? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yes. So what, what happened at the end of the credits? Because I'm in a big Marvel fan, so I had to put something in, and I thought it would be fun. So what happened at the end of the credits, guys, if you can refresh my memory? You <laughs> were a freaking Tok'ra. I wasn't a Tok'ra, that was my... It was, was yeah, my... a, a Tok'ra turned up. That was actually Martooth's original costume from the show. Nice. Uh, well, the funny thing was, the credits actually said you were the Tok'ra. No, that's my dad, Stephen. Ah. I'm Samuel. Hi. My bad. <laughs> it's fine. You're Australian. <laughs> oh, I couldn't think of anything. No, but what happened at the end of the credits? What happened in the post-credit sequence? Uh, uh, Toka comes so through the, the gate, there. and um, yeah, that's actually He's a good begging point. Begging for help. Yeah, for effectively, he comes to... through. There's a ghoul that's come back from the dead, and mm. um, yeah, if... again, my brain shuts down. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna say a Gould's come back from the dead, there's only one real option. 
Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we're waiting. <laughs> well, 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 we don't know when Continuum was set compared to this, do we? So theoretically, you could still be alive or you could be dead at this point. So that's that. That's the fun thing about Stargate Universe is that the canon of when it is a bit, a little bit side canon, like in terms of yeah everything else. So you can sort of do a bit with that. But no, yes, yeah, so the end of Stargate Universe doesn't hope. I thought, wouldn't it be awesome? I'm going to make a second film at some point. I want to have this character back because he just went through this interesting ordeal. You got the stones, so it can be on Earth. And this was sort of a universe is a much more isolationist, um, frantic film. That's the sort of film I made. But I wanted to make that more hardcore Stargate film that fans would be like. P90s, gun battle, yay, you know, <laughs> stuff we all want. Explosion, well. bad joke. Oh, absolutely. Richard Dean absolutely. Anderson, more Richard Dean Anderson. Yay, Richard Dean <laughs> oh, Anderson. Mate, I was about to say, <laughs> I'm about to say, explosions and bad jokes, this sounds like every Michael Bay movie. Oh, well, there's only a couple of those. Right uh, now. Okay, um, How, okay you, you've been fired. Michael Bay You're doing... fired. You're not allowed to t- mention Michael Bay and Stargate in the same sentence. If that ever <laughs> happens, see how, it's I'd on see you. <laughs> Like, I just want to see whether Michael Bay could screw up Stargate. <laughs> it would you're, be interesting. You're both fine. You're all fine. Oh, come on. <laughs> Google okay. Transformers with staff weapon cannons for arms. Interesting. Yeah. This, this just in. Save Sci-Fi Podcast <laughs> is looking for two co-hosts. If you're willing to apply. <laughs> hey, I, I only say that because when it comes to destruction, you can't get much better than what Carter did. <laughs> Amy, Amy's volunteered to be a co-host okay Amy you can kick David off and take over for him how does that sound <laughs> <laughs> that awkward silence oh I paused because it, it's, it's, she's behind us by a little bit Amy's um, Scarecrow's girlfriend and uh, she's in the <laughs> chat so yeah <laughs> so, I don't know if my, I don't know if mine's watching or not yeah uh, so. Knowing you, you're probably hoping no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so I'm just keeping an eye on Facebook. <laughs> okay, how about this? You jump in a puddle jumper and it whisks you back to when they were first starting, say, Stargate Universe, the actual show. And they say, Samuel, we want your help. What would you <laughs> change about the actual series if you could change anything? Is this a... Do anything you want, sort of situation, or yes, it's a limitation yes. by. Okay, good. No, um, no, no. You're, you're, you're. For, yeah. for whatever magical reason, you're the kingpin. You're the boss. What you say is law. And now own MGM. Awesome. Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> sure. We'll go with that. Uh, if you cancel uh, Stargate Universe, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, um, I, I think the most obvious one really uh, is, despite Universe being a very character-driven show, the the first series was far too drawn out, and I think. Season 2 got a lot better, a lot quicker, and the last few were excellent. I think if they'd shrunk Season 1 down to the half series, the end of the Lucian Alliance bit taking a uh, destiny should have been this uh, yeah. half-season break, and then Season 2 would have been second half of Season 1, leading to the end of Season 2 being the end of Season 1 with an amazing cliffhanger. They would have had a guaranteed second series to push it even further and get used to what they want. I think compress that down, you have less character development, but by golly did they have to make it you know, yeah. more... Season uh, one was great moments. so drawn out. It, it works when you watch it um, just episode, 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 but it does not work when you watch it weekly. Yeah, we, uh, you know, everyone live did and it didn't pick up. DVD is a lot easier, but I think definitely compress that. Um, maybe add the human element, the whole splitting the ship a lot uh, sooner, because at the end of the day, Stargate just like DS Nine had, you know, you can't just be on the station; it doesn't work. So yeah. Stargate, you can't just be on a ship and see no humans. You need that human element. The yeah. way they did it was genius, and they should have had that a lot sooner. Uh, maybe another alien race, maybe you know the alien race that did find them, actually properly pursuing them longer to give you a sense of more threat. Um, yeah. See the bridge sooner, because that was an awesome set. Um, yeah. And not kill off the Lucian Alliance scientist lady, because she was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, green. Can I chip in on this one? Sure. sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll, from, from now on, it's open to the panel. Whoever wants to sort of answer the questions, go okay. right ahead. Apart from the uh, speed things up thing, which I agree with you on, Sam, um, the one thing I would have changed would have been to remove that (laughs) whiny... Apologies for the language, but political slut. The... Oh, you mean, what's her face? (laughs) Chloe Armstrong. Chloe Armstrong, yeah. That one. She she did nothing but bring... Mm excess amount of drama and make it into a sitcom when that's not what the show needed yeah 
I, I think they had a good idea with um, sort of as a character she had a she had a good chance to be a good character but Stargate has traditionally done fairly poorly when representing female characters overall like they Carter being the Carter, Carter being and... the main example Dr. Weir being the secondary sort of example um, and over... Doc Frazier yeah, well, Doc, Doc Frazier was sort of she was never on screen enough to sort of fully develop but Stargate's always been good at developing the male characters and has never really been that good at doing the females at least overall in long term it took what four or five seasons for Carter to develop yeah to a good and character it, and it, well it took until Anil started bailing basically <laughs> oh dear so anyway and that can all be blamed on the fact that Richard Dean Anderson's knees decided to give out on him at the most inopportune moment <laughs> Uh, actually, it was more to do with his daughter. Yeah. Okay. Want to spend time but, with her. And yeah. his knees as well. Yeah. The arthritis Sh- while kicking. Shout out to James Bond, who apparently is listening to us. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. If it's Piers Brosnan, I'd love it so much. <laughs> Hi, Piers. We love you, Piers. <laughs> oh, my f- two favourite Bonds. Piers and. Well, who can go past Connery? <laughs> he just said blood. <laughs> Not Bond. Oh, sorry. My bad. I read it wrong. It's blood. I'm tired. Yeah, it's like it's from from now on, I we're know. calling you Bond anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, I should, a, a resident finished answering the question about the next Stargate film. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you want to go back to that? <laughs> we probably should. Yeah, that that getting back to actually talking about the topics would be a good one. <laughs> Um, You'll get used to this. So, we, we rarely stay on track for more than what uh, five minutes. It's too much sci-fi to stay on topic for one for one moment. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, no. The end of the, the end of the first film, Toka comes in, says the ex system lord Olokan has come back from the dead, and he's causing a big ruckus. He's found some ancient weapons, and he's going to cause big trouble. Um, and I thought that was a really interesting jumping-off point. Uh, Olokan, as you might remember, was in the original system lord episode. Um, He's, he's the system lord that got some ships destroyed by Anubis, and that was pretty much his part. <laughs> but he was, you know, quite... He was there, he was an original system lord. He was killed off-screen. They said that his his mothership was destroyed. But in my head, well, if you don't see him die on-screen, you know... He's not dead. A bit of flexibility. So I thought, well, what if he what if he swapped hosts at the last minute and then escaped on a cargo ship? Yeah. You know? Well, they do love their stealth cargo ships for... Absolutely. Uh, ...snake escape. Yeah. Uh, and with... The replicators uh, and Baal, you know, coming to a head at that point, it made make sense that any clever Gould mm, would leave, yeah. disappear. <laughs> so yeah. In my, so in my head, he took the remainder of his fleet, went to a, a solar system at the edge of the galaxy, took a few, you know, tens of thousands of yeah. humans hostage, whatever, put them to some other planets, and started ruling them as his own little mini empire. Because at the end of the day, wouldn't you rather be the, the leader of thousands than dead? Yeah, sort of and like that, the episode It's Good to be King. Um, I've forgotten yeah. which which system or that one was. It was one of them. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've watched that. that. <laughs> okay, no. just, just on season one, one or three. On the note of Gould, which one eight, of all eight. the ones that you've seen would be your favourite? Just really quickly, because mm. James has asked and I figured I Let's always... Let's say Baal. I think Baal. Baal because he's the most fleshed out and... He's just... I mean, I've met him a couple of times, and he's such a cool actor, and he has such a personality, yeah. and, and he got the chance to be the the no Gould voice and the Gould voice and the villain of a movie, and, you know, so he's pretty amazing. From his first appearance, I mean, he was he was stealing the episode in terms of performance. Um, some at part one and two, so, well, I think... Who knows, he might get a mention in the... I've actually written the script, but he hasn't, but I might have to mention him now. Cause he, <laughs> yeah. Well, you never know. He's only got, what, 100 million clients? Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm in my fourth draft of the next script, um, Stargate Universe Lost World, uh, which is the sequel, uh, although it's a distinctly SG-1 and Atlantis film because it takes place in the Milky Way. It takes place about three days after Distant Hope, so still in the middle of season one of Universe, which means that you, know, you won't be hearing why Eli, if Eli got back, because again, MGM doesn't want you to continue their property and would shut me down very quickly. Yeah. So I've got to keep it in the earlier timeline, and it means that I can 
you know, have that, like I said, bit of, well, what was happening at that time? Is yeah. the General Hammond around? Is the, you know, where, where's Atlantis? That's a yeah. tease, you know. Um, yeah. Have you, so stuff have, like have you read the, the Stargate Atlantis season six books by any chance? Uh, no, but I've read the plot for the movie as done by the writer's blog, so I know what would have happened and part of it's incorporated in my movie because for all intents and purposes that's what would have happened, so... Yeah. Reference. Yeah, me and a group of friends actually sat down and wrote almost half of season six for Atlantis, cool. like a full arc, and was going to finish with this big three parter at the end. With mm. the first of the three part follows one of the Atlanteans as he actually went back to the Milky Way and went off to hey. an, went off to Andromeda, found the furlings <laughs> in Andromeda because that's the easiest way to explain not finding them. Um, found the Nox in the Milky Way and sort of made this massive alliance fleet and parked it on the edge of the, uh, the Pegasus galaxy. And it was meant right. to receive a signal and then come in and have this big apocalyptic fight above Atlantis to free the city, which it, they never received. They, before this guy could get back to Atlantis and tell them of this fleet that he's built, uh, they, uh, they evacuated the city. But we actually had Ford come back so mm. we actually had Ford He's got to come back hasn't he though yeah Ford sort of came back and he was the one that sort of led them to this base that had all this intel in it about these ships and then the second last episode was sort of would be an establishing sort of setup where they build they sort of recreate the Atero device but have it as a local field so it's only around the planet they're in and that's effectively the trap the ships jump in and they can't get away um I was going to co-op some of the Stargate Pegasus Chronicle mods new Wraith ships. They've got about a half dozen mm -hmm. new yep. designed Wraith ships. I was, so I was going to give Todd a fleet of these new different designed trippy Wraith ships. He was going to be our ally. Taylor was going to go Wraith Queen again and sort of take on a, the <laughs> Council of Primaries, which was going to mm. be the last five primaries have sort of created this council that sort of oversee all of the Wraith fleet and trick them into sending the whole Wraith fleet in one massive hit at Atlant where Atlantis was at this point um, and it was just going to be this massive apocalyptic sort of old Asgard ships like the Odin class Asgard ship, ship which they never actually made for the TV series um, there's going to be about a half dozen of those there's going to be some furling ships which I've never even got around to des designing let alone working on what they're going to look like um, which I guess is the same thing and all of our earth ships are just sort of everything all or nothing type battle where eventually the end result is some of the Wraith survive and they're put on a planet and given the gene therapy which turns them <laughs> to human and Todd and his fellow Wraith feed on them while we work at how to make Todd more Todd and the other Wraith sort of human-ish and there was sort of going to be an, I tried to write it as this nice little book and it just never really happened and I would have loved to have seen like in the battle several of our Earth ships actually get done in but <laughs> Nice. So it's well, that it was, sounds very creative and, and yeah. using every element you know. Yeah. That's nice. So and digging difficult fan film to make though. Don't, oh, don't yeah. give me the script. So I won't be able to make that. <laughs> yeah. No. It's, well, it it sort of died back in 2010. Yeah. So it's like five years ago now. So, but I just every now and again I go back to it and sort of think about how I would have gone about sort of setting up the battle and stuff like that. And yeah, it mm. was. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's beyond the point. This is about you, not about me. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry for hijacking it again. I do that. No problem. He does that a lot. <laughs> I do that a lot. Yep. He hijacks everything. I'm surprised he hasn't tried hijacking cars yet. Well, there is a game called Grand Theft Auto, but it's more fun to make things go boom. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> boomy, boomy, bye-bye. Pretty much. Um, so, is there... <laughs> Anything else you want to sort of talk about to do with um, the distant hope? Yeah, wow, my brain is just not working. <laughs> just what brain? Shut up. Well, here. I mean, have you guys got any questions about the first film? Yeah, um, yeah. Anything at all? Throw them at me. I loved it, man. Oh, thank Except you. The only thing I had to I could really say about it was at to in the early part, it seemed a bit slow. Mm. Yes. Well, it's the it's the start of SGU, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. The um the um uh, when uh the major is uh sort of I don't know I guess the briefing room I can't really call it an interrogation room with the um, British guys. Yeah, yeah. When he's on the laptop, um, 
the scene with mm -hmm. Daniel talking about the dog yep. I get? Yep. Was that? Uh, I'm guessing that was from a series. I just can't remember if it actually was. That, that was lifted, I think, from season one, the first episode where he's introducing Eli to the gate. If I'm not mistaken, that's the exact same clips that, yeah. that Eli was shown. Because if they're shown to Eli, it's the same time period to so be shown to to our lead. Yeah, that was the thing behind it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I was yeah, trying to find. To me, it might be slightly strange, but it made sense. Yeah. I managed to I find the the dog. unedited. I managed to find the unedited version, so there's actually more in that scene than there is actually in the in the episode originally. Nice. Which is kinda cool. By any um, chance was that on the discs they sell on eBay that have all the different visual effects? Because I've got that on my computer uh, no. in front of me. <laughs> no, different different one. Although nice. I do have that as well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Thing. Um, so I might as well just so I know you have, um, I might as well tell you the, 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 the few big issues that I keep hearing for the film and just maybe address them because like, yep. there's, there's four issues that have cropped up over the, over the years now um, and they're all pretty much seen from the start because they're quite obvious. Yeah. And if you caught them. Um, first of all, he's not wearing a major's uniform. He's wearing a lieutenant. Um, the bars on his collar. Uh, reason yeah. being, I didn't notice that because that's the only one I had, and I didn't even know they were rank at the time because it, I was. You know, the film was actually quite a quick production. Yeah. Um, and on a zero budget, I happened to have a Stargate Universe outfit, so I couldn't exactly justify spending another seventy, eighty pounds on another one or pins. So just happens to be the costume I had but my rationale afterwards was that he he left uh, Icarus without a jacket and had to nick one of the other ma uh, one of yeah. the majors ones because yeah you know, one of the it. lieutenant guys ones yeah it's well, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes it, red Connie makes sense after all yeah. they only had and like know, minutes to grab just random cases of crap yeah. I'm surprised half of them had clothes as it is it, hell <laughs> Eli wore the same shirt for six months Absolutely. He, he, um, the actor David has actually said that he never wants to wear red again. So, <laughs> <laughs> can understand. Yeah, so that was obviously that a big issue. But everyone knows what a red shirt means. Yeah. <laughs> Expendable. Oh snap! And it says you are here, so it says where's where should the weapons be? Well, here. That's where yeah. they should fire. This is this is where yeah. you should aim. Crap. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, and um, again with the 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 general's outfit, it's actually. Uh, Master Sergeant's outfit again because we didn't have a general's outfit. There's quite actually, there's quite a lot of bits to a general's outfit. Which we actually have one now, and a lieutenant's outfit. So we're going to be able to have the full medals, the full everything nice. for the next film. But at nice. the time, obviously, what we had because I had to write it around what we had rather than yeah. uh, what we could buy. So again, I mean, it looks you could tell he's a Air Force officer. Yeah. So that's again the that's all that that's all that sort of what, really the, the important. The big joke about the film is that you talk about kind of continuity errors like that. But at the end of the day we all saw the universe pilot he wasn't in that beaming scene but in my film he was so obviously it's not the exact same universe because he's in the shot that he was never in but no one yeah. seems to you know, think that, about that. that those shots where you added them I were actually really really impressed I was very impressed by that that's old tech I can do it so much better now but yeah no, that was sort of not blow people away but say hey this is something a bit different yeah and, and it was definitely fun going through the show and saying well where can I just put him in where can I just casually yeah. just Marry yeah, him into uh, the background. Yeah, and there's there's more places you need to think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the, the table scene was the one that really got me because, if I remember correctly, didn't you have to take somebody out of that chair yeah. to put him in? Yeah. How many? How, <laughs> how long did it take before you wanted to stab yourself in the face for deciding to do that? Well, I had to do two different versions because I learned a different way of doing it halfway through so I had to stop and start again and then I, I went from a standard definition to a high definition version because I managed to get the whole show at 720 so it's actually everything's at 720 that you see so I uh, yeah don't ask <laughs> years ago I blo blocked out years ago yes. <laughs> that, that, that awkward moment when I hear the microphone drop and you curled up in the that I could hear you curled up in the fetal position going it's, it's okay I don't have to do it again it's all good <laughs> and I'm going into it again for the next film so that's that's, that's depressing oh uh, yeah do you guys have any questions about the first one? I mean, you're welcome to ask for any teasers in the second one. <laughs> well, um, I always leave it open to those guys, and every time I do, I get silence. <laughs> Stuart, David, come on, any questions? Anything you want? No, no, I like personally being surprised when new stuff comes out, so... Yeah, I'm not much of a spoiler person unless I have to find it. There's a time for them, but... No. Alright, well, we'll just go relatively spoiler free. What is the concept for. Uh, what is effectively number two? Yeah. Uh, the concept is. I think I think in my timeline, this is after Continuum, so Baal is gone. Um, 
Although if you include the fact he's in the past, because he's not gone, but yeah, whatever. Um, so he, uh, Olokan is the last of the system lords. Um, he's come back with a small fleet to try and find an ancient stockpile of weapons, uh, a, a stockpile that was saved and, and you know, uh, hidden just before Atlantis fell, or at least in that timeline. So it's Atlantis-style weaponry, you know, drones, ZPMs, whatever it may be. And obviously, if a go old was to find that, a single ZPM mothership, well, that will be a threat. Maybe not against Deadlisters as much. But one thing you've got to realize that at the beginning of Stargate Universe, and this has always bugged me, and I've written it quite carefully into my story, at the beginning of Stargate Universe, um, the Odyssey, or no, the General Hammond, sorry, the General Hammond fights one Hatak mothership, right? Two. Two Hatak mothership. But oh, two, sorry, two Hatak motherships. And it doesn't blow them up with Asgard beams within two seconds. Which yeah. is always bugged me. Because we can destroy ancient class. Wars in like in two three hits. shots. Yeah. yeah. So obviously the Lucian Alliance worked out dampeners. Obviously for the, the beam weapons. Obviously, I mean they had Talford for months. Yeah. Obviously they have the plans. They also have dampeners. So so my universe, um, motherships beam, beam are, weapons are, don't, don't work. Beam weapons don't work. So suddenly these fights become far more meaningful because at the end of the day, things got too overpowered. Uh, that's why they destroyed the drone threat. That's why they destroyed the drone threat at the end of season five because. Yeah. It's you know you can't affect Earth, so things like that. I mean, I've really thought about the continuity, really thought about what I'm doing. So Olokan is again a threat, and while we've got some ships, you know, uh, he's one step ahead, and we have to find him. We have to stop him. We have to save the galaxy. And Major Hunt, you know, he's a major for a reason. He's there's a reason he's a high rank, and that's because he's very good at a certain thing. And so they've kept him on Earth, but obviously he's messed up. He just went through a situation that he's not trained for. I mean, who who could really survive on a planet alone with? You know, flesh-eating monsters for that long. Yeah. I mean, the the worst part is not the monsters; it's knowing you've only got three bullets left in your clip, and you've always got to save one, haven't you? Um, yeah. So that's the story: is is, is what happens. It, it takes place, you know, across the Milky Way. Uh, it's, it's we'll see Atlantis, we'll see Destiny, we'll see the SGC, we'll see Deadless, we'll see, well not Deadless, we'll see one of them. You know, we'll see the locations that we want to see because it's the last fan film I plan to make, and I want to mill, I want to really put it all together because it's while well, it's a Stargate Universe film in themes. It's going to include everything, and hopefully fans will be happy because they will get finally some Stargate that you know that they want to see. And I'm mm, really nice. surprised that more fan films haven't come out in the last two years because there were two other fan films in production uh, when I started mine. Mine was the only one to come out, and it's been two years later, and I've already made a Star Trek fan film in between, and yeah. then I'm going to a second Stargate film. So it's you know I think fans deserve some more Stargate because it's a phenomenal show, um, and if I can make that with my new skills, more green screen, you know. The, there's stuff I can do. We've got more costumes, more props. I finally get to put P90s back into it because I love a P90. We've got several of them, and they couldn't use them in Destiny, which annoyed me. So P90s are back, and, you know, uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, I just got one thing there on the ship issue. Yeah. I've just been sitting here thinking about it. Um, at what stage did Icarus kick off before or after uh, the end of the Asgard situation? Um... I would have thought far after. U- universe is set after uh, the end of Atlantis because at the end of Atlantis, yeah. Carter says that she gets she's going to get receive the next ship off the line, which is going to be called mm-hmm. the Hammond because in remembrance of um, General Hammond or Don S. Davis who died very recently um, from a heart attack. Um, yeah. well, the reason what I was thinking is we know that all that that's in continu- in continuity. And then the Odyssey was on with all the overpowered Asgard weapons, correct? Uh, well, at, at no, that we point, the Daedalus uh, as well. Uh, yeah, Daedalus, um, Apollo, yeah. and Sun Tzu have all been refitted as far as we know. Well, theoretically, okay. we don't know that Sun Tzu was, but now, we can assume it was. Yeah. Question is, the question, I, the thing that's running my head is it's going to take a while for those Asgard weapons to be duplicated with Earth tech. Even if we've got the plans, it's going to take us a while to get the materials together to build them. Maybe the uh, Hammond at that well, point no, the Asgard, had, the Asgard, had the refit. Well, no, well, the Asgard gave us a matter creator on the yeah. Odyssey, so we can just build, we can just replicate their materials. And you saw the um, Asgard weapons control system behind Carter on the the Hammond. On every if I ship, basically. At the start, yeah. So, so I, I don't think that's the biggest problem. No. They they sort of made that a bit too easy. But again, we did have the Asgard for a couple of days, just telling us what to do. So, and Carter's pretty smart. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, it was just an idea that could have explained some of that in the fact they just hadn't got around to refitting the Odyssey or some, there was some bug in the systems that wouldn't let it work or they didn't have a ZPM. Yeah. It, is, it is a glaring issue, though, isn't it? Why yeah. didn't they just blow up? A mothership is not an issue. Why are you not... A mothership wasn't an issue for a standard... Um, yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah, with, with well, the, they had to... Fatalist class way back when. They had to trick mm. the Odyssey into going into a minefield <laughs> when it was up yeah. against two of them. So it's like, yeah. Anyway, um, I think that'll probably cover us for this. So I, since um, the... the My brain is not working. Since... Um, wow. My brain is just totally shut down. Someone get him a bottle of Coke, stat. <laughs> oh, just, just give me a second. Ready? Just, just gotta find the right. Eh. The hell? Why are you not working? I was gonna try and Sonic my own face to see if it helped, but my Sonic isn't working. Oh no! <laughs> so, so much for the Sonic screwdriver of help. There, some. I'm assuming that was Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fixed um, anyway the one of the fans of Save Sci- po- Sci-Fi posted up a letter the other day well it was sort of a response to a comment and the comment was to do with the irrational hatred of the J.J. Abrams Star Trek and I'm one of the people that's on the on the side of um, that J.J. Abrams Trek isn't as bad as a lot of people sort of make it out to be um yeah um I have no idea how to say that name Jacob Odtrubba it sounds oh. perfect to me <laughs> oh yeah I, I apologise catastrophically um and profusely I'm just gonna call uh, I'm just gonna go with James Blood because that is the name that you're using for your thing if that's okay well, I'm I'm with you on this one, Dave. I don't think it was that bad. No. A lot of well, people went into it expecting it to be uh, old school Kirk and everything that made that what it was. But I went in with an open mind and I just loved it. The pieces. The only thing I wasn't a hundred percent liking of was the uh, rapid fire pulse phases. But even <laughs> they were still cool in their own right. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, Jacob goes in. Jacob's letter starts off with um, s- starts off with saying he was originally watched uh, he was originally drawn into Star Trek through Next Gen and Deep Space Nine as a child and it was important to him because it explained the human mind and que- and to question both authority and sort of what is deemed a fact if enough evidence arises to contradict that fact. Um, he didn't watch the later season, the the original series, until much later after Babylon Five, um, and he loved uh, DeForest Kelly, aka Bones, in that series, and that's what kept him watching. He loved the he loved the characters and all that sort of stuff. And even though sort of the the, the effects were well, the sixties, um, <laughs> pretty much all you really need to say for that. Um, yeah, the scientific scientific sort of approach um, even though the effects were from the 60s he still really sort of enjoyed it um, what he he didn't really like um, the new stuff Enterprise Voyager and the I, I call Voyager the same Abrams as bloody Star Trek Next Generation and Deep Space Nine it's the same tech it's the same series it's just yeah. more along the, more storyline along the lines of the original yeah. no less political bullcrap yeah well <laughs> Um, there's there's a lot more to the letter, and I'm sorry that I just I just don't have the time to read it all on air. Um, there is a copy of it on the Save Sci-Fi um, Facebook page on the wall post, so anyone who wants to read it's more than welcome to read it there. Um, yeah, he says Voyager's not well written. Um, so yeah, Voyager anyway. was still more fun than Deep Space Nine. Yeah. So anyway, I apologise for not being able to read the whole thing, but that's the sort of the gist of it. Um, so I'm gonna throw my two cents in so, here. Yeah. Um, growing up on the other side of the fence, I didn't come to Star Trek to uh, very later on. But what? Um. Uh, my first Star Trek that I saw uh, was was uh, uh, next uh, next generation. Then I went to Voyager. Then I went to Deep Space Nine. Then I went to the original series. Yeah. Well, um, oh, you go. I was just gonna say my introduction to Trek was actually the J.J. Abrams stuff. 
<laughs> that's where I started, and I went from there to Enterprise to original series, then to Next Gen, and I'm about halfway through Voyager at this point. But at that point, after marathoning so much Trek, I reached the point where I was burning out. So I went, no, I haven't seen Babylon 5, let's watch that. And in less than a month, I've watched the first four seasons of it, so... Um, so for me, um, I was a similar sort of line thing, but I, I um, see things very differently to him. I like the, I do, I do like the, um, the new Star Trek movies as well as the old stuff. Yeah. Well, see, I view it... Like I do I with the Stargate reboot, and I'll stand by this, and it's I view it as two totally different sort of things. Exactly. Because um, it's like it's, and I hate to to make the comparison. I really do, and I apologize in advance if it annoys you. But to me, it's like Catholics versus Protestants. <laughs> it's the same basic underlying thing, but you dis- but it's different on certain areas. Yes. They hate each other. They always hate, they'll always hate each other. But and different colour hats. Yeah, if, effectively, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to put, play it nice, basically, on that. But yeah. Different coloured hats. <laughs> well, I come from a different perspective on this because I'm a fan. I'm part of the fan film maker community uh, with my own Star Trek fan film, which means I've you know talked to other makers and people who are busy with Trek, and I run a, I help run a, a Star Trek uh, web series which deals with all the technology and ships, and you've got to be very fair to J.J. Abrams because at the end of the day it is, it is Star Trek. The only difference really to J.J. Trek is that it, it is a different universe and it's different rules and it's, it's Star Trek by name but not by, not by feel. It's a different Star Trek as long as you think, well, it's different Star Trek or if it's just a big sci-fi romp then it's fine. It's not the original Trek and you can't compare it because the original Trek is Star Trek and this is just the new Trek which is J.J. Abrams own little invention and it's fine. It's it's an action movie more than a, a Trek, and the second one is more of a Star Wars movie than a Star yeah, Trek movie. So, but it, it's good for what it is. And if you can just turn your brain off and just enjoy it as a as a not Star Trek fan continuity and just watch as it is, because they don't really listen to continuity, unfortunately, in a lot of cases. You can just enjoy them, and it's it's definitely yeah. fun to watch Into Darkness, if not very good for your sci-fi brain at all. Yeah. And so anyway, just James has posted a few comments. I just want to get just want to say just because I know you guys can't see the chat. Um, the point of my post is there's um, no reason to have the same names and same ships. So it's basically saying there was no reason to have it as a reboot. It could have very easily been any other ship at any other point in time, um, yep. as opposed to the original ship. But um, I don't see how. Sadly, it wouldn't really be a Star Trek movie without the focus being. The Enterprise. Yeah. Well, it could have well, easily it could have easily yeah, been Enterprise. Boy from DS9. No, it could have easily been Enterprise B, Enterprise C, the Enterprises we didn't see. It could be the Enterprise J. It could be the Enterprise Z. Just it's an Enterprise we haven't seen. I think's the point he's sort of or, making. Or the Enterprise. It's one year after release with April, Captain April, and then it would have been totally new because we didn't know the crew. We didn't know the. Whatever I think, JJ yeah. Abrams missed a beat because there's two big things he should have done. He should not have made it a time travel reboot. If he had just said, "This is my own universe," he could have made all of his own on continuity. We couldn't have complained. And he shouldn't have had James T. Kirk and that crew because we know them, and fans are guaranteed to not like it in some way. It should yeah. have been, and if it was just an original crew on an original ship somewhere else, it would have been like, "Oh, that's interesting." But because it's our characters, like you can't say you can't change the fact that they're different ages, which doesn't work. You know, they're they're di- different character traits. People, events are different when they shouldn't be. It's yeah. difficult to do it. If he just had his own true Trek, rather than trying... And then calling it the Enterprise and, and calling it James D. Kirk, that was to make money. That wasn't yeah. a creative decision. I'll actually I'll, I'll definitely agree with you on that. Um, the, the, and they did make money. They did do their op. They had yeah. their success. Now he's on Star Wars, so he got exactly what he wanted, Mr. J.J. Abrams, and we've got two films out of it that at least continues yeah. the name of Star Trek in vaguely. Yeah. Um, well, if nothing else, it brought back interest in the series because it yeah. had pretty much. It had died fall catastrophically. Fall hey, hey, face, hey, fan films. Come on, fan films have been. Have been <laughs> oh, yeah. Fan films Massively. Business. I mean, Phase 2, James Corley's been in for you know, 10, 12 years. You know, yeah. He's the godfather. He's made some phenomenal stories. I, don't, I mean, three TOS bridge sets were made before those films came out. So I don't think you can say there's no interest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, in, in what, 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 what we meant is. Um, Nemesis. In te- Star Trek as itself 
had pretty much fallen on its face. Yeah. We went well, t- Enterprise, t- TV, TV series wise um, after sort of Nemesis and the Enterprise TV show TV series wise there was very little interest in continuing Trek on the little screen and something well, I think fiction. that a Something I, th- I think I just want to say this really, really quick. Um, something I think that a lot of people have got to remember is that writing a TV show and writing a movie are two totally different things. <laughs> you can't write TV level characters into a movie unless you want the movie to go for twenty hours. And we all know how that turned out, Hobbit. Um, <laughs> well, that's what I was Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so you've got to make some compromises in the character side of things to tell a movie story, a story in an hour and a half or two hours or two and a half hours. But they did that. They did that in the original series movies just fine. So yeah, but they yeah, already but had. They used original they... already set up characters from a TV show. They were already really highly fleshed out. There was nothing left. Well, Sulu Uhura Chekhov weren't, but okay. <coughs> uh, they were still more fleshed were. out and established. Yeah, oh, than a reboot. Yeah. Or a brand new series. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. So, so anyway, anyway, um Well say so if if he wants more original stuff, I know, and I'm gonna do a quick plug here. He should go <laughs> he should go check out the uh, Star Trek Continues uh, web series. Yes. No. <laughs> that What's is wrong? Ninety percent of it? Fantastic. I just don't really like Vic Mignogia. <laughs> oh, he's lovely. Come on. He's not that bad. I've met him several times. He's a really nice guy. He is yeah. one of the biggest uh, Trekkies you'll find. I mean, he saw oh, it I'm not denying, when it first came out. I'm not denying this. I am i don't like him personality. The guy's a man whore. But that's Captain Kirk. Right. Yes. <laughs> he plays to his strengths of his links with William Shatner. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, he plays <laughs> to his strengths in... This is probably the only time he does, but having met him at two, three supernovas, quite frankly... It's like he has nothing else to do except go to supernovas. He's at every single one of them. Yeah. Well, we had Grant turn up to the last one. That was pretty cool. Yeah, well, Grant was at Sydney and it was at Brisbane. Yeah. yeah Grant came back for Brisbane. Mm. He, he, the look on his... Uh, so, sorry to de- derail again, like always. The look <laughs> on his face when he saw that um, ultimate fan crew fanship picture that I've got... Um, uh-huh. For those who haven't seen it, jump over onto Save Sci-Fi. Uh, we do a, we're currently voting on the evil ship crew. Um, so j- jump on over and check that out. Comment on who you want to be. Wow, who's this week again? What are we up to? Um, uh, we, security, I think. No, security was last week. Um, uh, I'll go have a look. <laughs> yeah, you go, go have a quick look. Um, yeah. We are on... But yeah, anyway. And so we've got... Science officer. Science officer, that's the one. Um, and... And everyone wants law. Yeah, everyone wants law. And if it's... it's if it's not law, they want something else. But... Uh, Baal, it'd be interesting, science officer. <laughs> oh, Nerus? Uh, no. Ow, too much ow, food. Ow, ow, Okay, let's just catch up with him. Uh, so apparently, Scarecrow's on fire. Are you okay there, Scarecrow? Sorry, leg cramp. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Anyway, he saw that and he almost passed out. He was like, "What is this?" Oh, <laughs> it was. Grant, Grant's awesome. Yeah, I know. I knew it was a big nerd. That's why I took it over to him to show him. Yeah. And so yeah, he I invited him on the podcast. He was just too busy to sort of make it. So that sort of sucked. Well, on other fan films that are continuing, I mean, you've got to look at Axanar done by yes. Alex Peters as being a yeah. true I mean that, yeah. that and, prelude I mean that is the truest Star Trek as in terms of a continuation and original because obviously continues is TOS continue this is an original piece I mean that is 100% Star Trek maybe a little bit darker but Star Trek did get dark in places and that is Horizons that is definitely... Horizons and Axon are both shows that I watch with bated breath and I, I we, we every time <clears> they <throat> post news I share it on Save Sci-Fi because they they definitely deserve it well, Horizon in terms for making that era feel alive, and then Axanar for pure professional professionalism and acting, because you can't beat the actors they've got, obviously. Yeah, yeah. That's the getting the the Battlestar guys in on that is just spectacular. They did a really good job. Mm. Um. So, yeah, Look, looking forward to. So if I remember correctly, some of them. Um, 
Wow, my brain died again. I was going to say <laughs> some of them are going to were, are going to go to Hawaii Con, and then I realised that that was Hawaii Con that's gone. So they're not going to well, the next Hawaii Con. So, but yeah, they do lots of conventions. Like um, they want to get the name out. Yeah. So, but yeah, we we definitely sort of keep an eye on that. So um, that reminds. And hopefully, oh hopefully yeah. Have you ever watched Star Wreck the Pinkney? Just mm-hmm. mentioned by, um, mm-hmm. by James. Any yes, of you guys seen that? Yes. I've uh, seen the visual effects for it at least. I haven't managed to sit the whole through the whole thing, but yeah. the CG is great. It's done by the same guys that eventually made Iron Sky, and it's mm-hmm. the, the, the battle between. That the, makes sense. They, they, they got <laughs> they got a slight minor cease and desist for using. Yeah. Um, uh, what's it called? Using the Star Trek and Babylon Five ships to fight each other, they got a minor slight cease and desist, so they had to go in and replace <laughs> all of the visual effects of those ships oh, with ships that weren't those ships, but hilariously look surprisingly similar. So, oh yes, well, the, just a quick they use shout out while we're still on Star Trek. Yep. Um. For those of us who are in Australia and watch and intending to go to the upcoming Supernovas, Melbourne and Gold Coast particularly, oh, on yes, the crew like list, this. on the show showing list we have, I knew of one, but now I can confirm two others. We have the original Sulu, Uhura, and Chekhov. Yes, I'm mm. looking forward to that. I'm going to get them to sign my. I've got one of those Enterprise original series Enterprises. Um, Shatner was here last year. I got him to sign it on the disc, the the, 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 the main sort of brown beast. So I'm going to get them to sign that as well, so I'll have all four of them on one. Um, anyway, it's we're getting close and, to the end oh of the my shows. Oh, God, this has yep. got to be a miracle. Vic Megonia is not on the list. <laughs> so give it time. Give it time. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's busy with his second kickstart, isn't he? Down yeah, yeah, he's busy with his Nichols and Keenig. Or, hmm. or as they prefer to call it, the, uh, the second Kirk starts up. Okay, anyway, it's time to jump across to Stuart's news. Jesus Christ, this is going to be fun. <laughs> so, Stuart, you've got five minutes, not joking. Alright, so, uh, we're going to start, and we're going to go everywhere, really. So, uh, Patrick, Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen will not be in X-Men Apocalypse. Confirmed. Oh, man. That was confirmed by uh, Patrick Stewart himself. He was doing an interview, and he said that they will not be appearing on it, so we'll not have them. We, now, moving on to Star Wars news, we may have a female Stormtrooper. <laughs> Amy That's Beth Hargreaves. Hargra- uh, Hargra- it's, it's probably Hargreaves. Uh, Hargra- could potentially. Yeah. Well, it's EA, so I'm going to take Hargreaves. But yeah, anyway. It has uh, potentially been uh, spoiled as a female Stormtrooper. We already know that's a black Stormtrooper, so this would be really cool if it did. Uh, Zachary Levi to lead. The Heroes Reborn miniseries on NBC. Thank you, NBC! Another piece of late-breaking news to do with that. Did you um, see the link I posted about Chuck? Yes. Yes. yes I have that. I have what, they're getting a movie? What? No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. So, oh, uh, let me find it. I had it somewhere. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, you realise it's the same person, right? Sure. I'm tired, my brain's not working. <laughs> so I just said the same story twice. Yay! He is that awesome, he deserves two shout outs. Yeah. So yes. yeah, Zachary Levi, who's Chuck, will be will be in, uh, is going to be uh, leading the Heroes Reborn miniseries. So, yeah. As Silas' son. Um, so, yeah. Can I jump in with something on your news? Yes. Sure. Uh, Stuart? Uh, work. For those of us who grew up playing uh, Sega consoles, I just want to throw this one out there. The voice actor for the last 20 odd years for Dr. Robotnik slash Eggman has passed away. Well, in the original, the Japanese variant. So, farewell, Eggman. Sonic Fire. Don't take over the he- heaven until the bloody hedgehog gets up there to kick your ass again. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. He's going to have to deal with Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm here till Thursday. Uh, waitresses. All right, back to the news, and this I'm really excited for. Simon. Hi King everyone, Day. I'm back. Metal Rift's Sorry. back. Oh. They're back with literally five minutes left. Five minutes. How do you feel? Yeah. Anyway, news yeah, go. That's fine. 
Simon Kimberg is the new screenwriter for the standalone Star Wars film. For those who don't know, he's the screenwriter uh, who, who was involved with X Men: Dance of Future Past and Godzilla. So oh, awesome. really let them that. fight. Yeah, let them fight. Uh, Spidey could possibly be in Avengers. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Hat. That Sony will not let that. No, happen. no, no, no. There's there's news come out that um, Sony and Marvel have potentially made an agreement for. Spidey to join in for the third Avengers movies. Yeah, the Infinity War. So not for, not for Civil War, he will not be they, in Civil War. Yeah, we oh, missed. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. I know. We, it would, the, Civil War is the perfect place to plop him in, but the second best choice is Infinity Wars. Yes. All right. Keeping yeah. keeping on uh, uh, Avengers news, the uh, Avengers, the new Avengers two trailer was dropped last week. And it, shows Hulk, and it shows Hulk going on a rampage, and he's being possessed. Yes. Well, it's a bit early for World War Hulk, isn't it? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, while we're briefly on this, the uh, when they showed the trailer, everyone had questions of who the chick in the uh, cave was. There is a theory going about that it could be Shuri, younger brother, uh, younger sister of Black Panther. Okay, so, but I'm also so, speculating um, Polaris, so um, the uh, twins' younger sister, or um, Captain Marvel. Could Ooh, be. interesting choices. But yeah, anyway. Yes, uh, continue. Uh, John Barrowman reveals Torchwood return plans. Yes, <laughs> finally. Uh, Not as a TV show. No, as a radio play. Which is pretty cool uh, on its own it's right. Still, it's still a torch for it. Hey, yeah. the, the Eighth Doctor did it for ten years and they're amazing, so it'll be great. Yeah. Yes. And I think I can squeeze it in. The Sci-Fi Expanse trailer has zero gravity sex. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a lot of people sort of going woobly woobly about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't yeah. even do that. Oh, just, yeah. just, okay, we've got two minutes left so I'm going to make this really really quick um, who has seen the British show Broadchurch yep. yes how many different Doctor Who people are in that thing <laughs> it's like it's like they fell off the Doctor Who bandwagon and their way of getting back into it so it's like actors no. anonymous they dump no, no. them in Broadchurch and they wait for them to fall out the other side no, no, no. Broadchurch well that's the thing I've noticed with British actors <laughs> they're either in Doctor Who or related to people who have done Doctor Who or in Marvel movies. I'm looking at you, Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> I was um, I was watching on um, the Penguins of Madagascar today. He was actually one of the. Uh, he was um. He was the wolf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, two minutes left. Um, I'm. So it's about time for everybody to say their goodbyes. So I'll let Samuel go first. Give us a shout out to anything you want us to check out and all that sort of stuff, and then we'll say our goodbyes. Well, thanks very much. Uh, it's very nice to be on the show. Uh, thanks for inviting me on, even at short notice. And yeah, so check out Stargate Universe Distant Hope, the old film. Check out Temporal Anomaly, Star Trek, the new film. Check out <laughs> the uh, Distant Hope Facebook for the new Lost World film. And check out uh, Trek Yards, the web, uh, Star Trek web series at some point, because that's always awesome. And if you guys want to talk about any of that stuff in the future, just feel free to invite me on. I can wake up early again. It wasn't too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Let's hope we don't have uh, technical difficulties next time. <laughs> no. Yeah, 20 minutes delay Sorry is always Sorry about that 20 minute delay. So, well, we, you, since you disappeared, we just straight out blamed you. Yeah. Uh, it started really? working when you weren't here, so... <laughs> and if, oh, yeah, guys, if you look in the chat, the I, uh, I, the I trooper, that's my captain. So I get blamed on a lot of shit from him. Yeah. I'm calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway... Uh, we got to go, have fun, and we shall catch you guys uh, next time, I guess. See you next week, See, see he agrees Bye. with me. See, he agrees Bye, with me. Bye, everybody. Whoa, that, sorry about that. That was a tad loud. So, anyway, um, don't forget to check out the Save Sci-Fi Facebook page. Um, we will be doing sort of fairly consistent posts up there. We've got some new stuff we're trying to get out, so... Um, just keep an eye on it. Remember, like the more you like, the more you share, the more of our posts you get to see. So, anyway, have fun, and we shall 
catch you guys next time. Brilliant. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. So long and thanks for all the fish. Do 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 do.